Hello, and welcome to Hackalade Studio. In this video session, we give you a quick tour of Hackalade Studio and review the user interface. When you start Hackalade Studio, you first get a slideshow of the major functionality. After going over the overview, you may decide to stop showing it at startup. If you ever want to consult it again, simply go to Help, Hackalade Studio Overview. After that, when you start the application, you first see a welcome screen. In this screen, you can see handy shortcuts to common actions. In the top right-hand corner, you find icons to the Hacklade website and to the Hacklade pages on social media and GitHub repositories. Right below that, you find shortcuts to Hacklade resources, such as the online user guide, our e-learning platform with progressive video tutorials, sample models, and also a link to submit a ticket to our help desk. On the left, you find common tasks such as creating a new model, opening an existing model, or reverse engineering of an instance. Some of these tasks may be disabled, depending on the license type. And below, you find shortcuts to recent files and directories. Once in the application, you can access the welcome page again by clicking View, then Welcome Page, or by clicking the home icon in the top of the context bar to the far left. The context bar gives easy access to major application areas, such as the data modeling context, the repository context, the compare and merge context, and administrative screens, such as the plugin manager, user preferences, or your license status screen. In the data modeling context, the Hackalade Studio workspace is made of different parts. All the way at the top, a menu bar gives you access to all the functions of the application. Below that is a toolbar with shortcuts to the most common actions. The rest of the screen is made of three panes. The central pane is where you perform most of your work. You visualize here your entity relationship diagram, graph diagram, or diagram view, a subset of the main diagram, something other tools might call submodels or subject areas. With the tabs at the bottom, you may also view model definitions and the schema artifact for your model. You may zoom in or zoom out fit the diagram to the pane, right-click on a selected object to show a contextual menu, add entities and attributes, move things around via drag and drop, change display options, and much more. If you open an entity in its own tab, you may now see a tree view which is particularly handy for hierarchical structures. You may also see a JSON schema preview screen, showing the JSON schema for this entity in different JSON schema specifications compliance levels, and resolution of references. In the right pane, you can see a JSON sample data file, optionally populated with dynamically generated mock data. To the left, the pane is divided in two parts. At the top, there is a collapsible section of diagram objects with shortcut icons. You can either click an icon to create an object, or drag and drop the chosen object to the location of your choice in the canvas. The section below is the object browser section, showing a dynamic tree of the hierarchy of entities maintained in your current model. The entries in the tree are easily searchable and let you directly access the objects of the ERD and their properties. Here also, you may display a contextual menu for the selected object by doing a right click with your mouse. The right hand pane displays the properties for any object you select in the object browser or central pane. This is where you maintain the characteristics and constraints of each object. Note a couple of advanced features. The ability to maintain business names and technical names for any object, potentially deriving automatically the technical name from the business name based on a glossary of abbreviations. The list of properties can easily be configured to display custom properties. For example, for data governance purposes of for hooks with code generation scripts, it is also possible to define custom tabs of custom properties. Note that some people prefer to work in the central pane using the toolbar icons or keyboard shortcuts, and by right, clicking to access a contextual menu. Other users prefer to work in the object browser, or with shortcuts, or with the toolbar. Hackalade Studio lets you do things in many different ways, according to your preference. Here are a few additional tips. You may work with multiple instances of the application by going to the File menu, then Start New Application Instance. Note also some additional options in the file menu, such as save obfuscated as to mask meaningful data when sending the model file for troubleshooting. You may also generate documentation in HTML, Markdown, or PDF formats, or create images for the different diagrams. 
If you need more space for the central pane, you may toggle the two side panes using the view menu or by dragging the boundaries or double clicking on the three vertical dots. We conclude here this video session. Make sure to watch the next video on how to easily create your first data model with Hacklade Studio. You may also consult our website hacklade.com for additional information. Thank you for your attention.